In this video, we're going to talk about the new permission system in PowerShell Universal version 5. In version 4, we primarily used roles and some access controls to allow you to configure which resources users have access to inside PowerShell Universal. While that's very much the same, we have removed access controls and replaced them with a new permission system that actually permeates the entire authorization system inside PowerShell Universal. So I'm going to show you some examples of that today, and we're going to dig into um, how it all works. So right now I'm logged into my PowerShell Universal version 5 admin console as an administrator. And with the administrator role, I have full access to everything inside this platform. So we actually click security roles. What you're actually going to see now is we have this little permissions button here next to each role. If I click that, it's going to give me an identifier and a description of what that permission grants to this particular role. So the administrator has a wildcard identifier, so that means that they have full access to the PowerShell Universal system, including settings and security. They can pretty much do whatever they need to. If we click on the operator role, for example, though, they only have access to APIs, apps, automation, portal, and platform. They don't have access to settings or um, security inside the admin console or via the management API or PowerShell Universal commandlets. So as you can see, again, we have this identifier system where we have like a namespace such as APIs, and then we're granting full read, write, and execute access for all the API features. If we have a user that has kind of a specific type of access, like a reader role, and we click that, what we'll see here is the identifier now is API slash read rather than API slash star, which means all access to APIs. This just means they can read um, a particular, or read the API or view the API um, resources inside the admin console or the management API. They can't actually modify anything. So let's actually take a look at how that looks for a user with these permissions applied. So I actually have an identity um, called API user, and he actually has the API editor role defined. So you may not have seen that in here because I didn't have this checkbox clicked at the top right called display built-in roles. One thing we've added inside version um, 5 is uh, a series of built-in roles that have these permissions predefined. So you don't actually have to set up um, you know, a role for every little thing necessarily. You can select from a series of roles that have the permissions defined already. So for example, I have assigned API editor to that API user. And this just has all access to APIs. It doesn't have access to apps or um, the portal or anything like that. It's just APIs. So we have a, a set of these built-in roles. We'll probably be expanding that based on um, user need and you know, as we work through our first version of version five here, um, I'm sure this list will expand with additional roles so that you don't have to define the permissions yourself necessarily. That said, you still can create custom roles with custom permissions uh, for specific things that you may wanna do inside the admin console. So again, I have this identity, API user with the API editor role assigned. So let's actually log out of my admin account. I am going to log in with my API user. And now you'll see a very different admin console. The home page only has a single um, card on it because it's the only card that is accessible by an API user. So they can see that we have one endpoint. The menu on the left hand side only has API endpoints, documentation and event hubs. We could restrict the user further to only have access to something like APIs or event hubs, um, but because they have access to the entire API feature, that's why they see all three nodes. So now if we click APIs, you can see they can see the APIs, they can create APIs, they can edit APIs, API properties, that kind of thing. So they have full access to the API feature, but no access to anything else. If they were to grant themselves an app token and then access it via the management console, they would have the same uh, limitations because those permissions are now throughout the entire platform. So um, we use this permission system for all the author authorization. Um, so it's just one way to do everything, kind of simplifies it, but also gives you a lot more control about what resources particular users can access. So one other thing that you can do um, is actually provide um, users with specific permissions. And this is kind of a good example of what it looks like um, when you know, you're defining your own permissions. So 
not only can you assign them to roles, you can also assign them to particular identities. So if you go to security, there's a new permissions tab here or page. So I'm going to click this. This is granular permissions that I can provide to identities. Um, this is not actually where you assign roles. We need to update that doc or description for the final release here. But if I create a permission here, I can select my API user identity. I can select my resource. And as you can see, these are all the uh, kind of resource IDs that you can select from inside PowerShell Universal. So as I said before, like you could assign a more granular permission for a user. If you didn't want to just give them API access, you can give them event hub access or something like that. But let's give this user uh, access to apps. And we're just going to give them all access. But you could give them read access, create access, execute, delete, or update access um, to kind of determine what part of the system the user actually has access to. So we're just going to say all and click OK. And now you can see it generates the identifier for you. Um, that's apps slash star, which means pretty much all access to the apps feature. So I'm going to log out of my admin account again. And I'm going to log in with my API user account. And now you can see when I log in, they have one more card showing on their homepage here, as well as another node in the menu, which is the apps um, menu item. So I click this, you can see that they now have access to create apps inside PowerShell Universal. They can view running apps, they could edit apps, that kind of thing, because I gave them all access to apps. And this works the same way for pretty much every node or resource inside PowerShell Universal. So we could you know, give them additional uh, permissions to set settings or update the branding, that kind of thing, um, without giving them a very specific uh, or generalized role like we had in version four. So this more or less replaces uh, access controls. And um, because we are using it throughout the entire system, uh, it works throughout the entire system, unlike access controls. And it's a little easier to configure um, than access controls were that didn't really even have a very uh, good UI or anything for that. Additionally, we have the built-in roles to make it easier to just assign these types of permissions without having to define any roles or assign any permissions yourself. But you can always create roles that have custom permissions or assign custom permissions like I did here. So if you have any feedback on our permissions feature in uh, PowerShell Universal v5, feel free to uh, post in the forums or open a GitHub issue.